So uh, the thing I love about New York is there's a lot of great use cases. The thing I hate about New York is none of them can talk about it because they have like, oh, we would love to use your product. Here's our NDA. <laughs> OK. Um, but let's just say if we went south of here, like where there's a bull somewhere, and you swung a laptop around, you probably hit a bunch of our customers, I bet. Yeah, you would? Probably. It might happen. I don't know. So. Um, Caroline and I have been working together for a long time. You're a very <laughs> seasoned engineer at this project. <laughs> and you've been doing this for a long time. So tell us about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So like Patrick said, my name is Caroline George. Uh, I'm a solutions engineer at Datastax. I've been at, I've been at the company a little over four years. Um, I actually have a funny story about when I started, when I joined Datastax. It's funny slash embarrassing, but uh, my first day at Datastax was boot camp, right? So if you're client-facing technical, you start with four weeks of training, which is really well done. It's amazing. So flew from New York to California, walk in the room, and wow, I actually know somebody. And I go, hey, Patrick, how are you? Do you remember this? <laughs> I, I, you probably, you didn't I tell me you were going to talk about this. OK. Yes, I remember you and saying that. And then like, maybe five <sighs> seconds too late, I realized that Patrick actually didn't know me, and I actually don't know Patrick. But when I joined Data Science, there was no Data Science Academy, there was no developer days, there was no distributed data show. And so the way I learned Cassandra was watching videos on YouTube of Patrick. We were best friends, right? Yeah, that was not awkward <laughs> at all. Yeah, yeah. And I wish I could say hi to everyone that watches my videos. Are but, they still yeah. on YouTube? Oh, yeah, a lot of them. But there was a really popular one from 2014. It has like 250,000 views on it. There I don't you know. Go. So if you don't have enough material. Yeah, you saw that one, right? Oh, I know him. Yeah. Yeah, so, so don't do what Does I everyone want right? to be my friend? Let's <laughs> hang out. Come on. All right, so that's great. That's that's really embarrassing. Thanks, Caroline. Um, well, it was embarrassing for me. Because <laughs> it, it was, was like, like a split yeah. second, and I was like, oh. You can, if you want to be my friend, that's fine. I'm totally cool with that. And if you want to say, I know you, I want to know you too. So, yeah. but, but we've gotten to know each other for a long time now. So we could say we're really friends now. Yes, yeah. I have to say, I mean, before making an amazing first impression at this company, my background, I started as a developer. I did Java, web, iOS development, uh, traditional relational databases, a lot of SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL. So I kind of went through exactly what Jeff was describing, you know, I downloaded DSC on my laptop. I had a OneNote cluster, created a key space, created a table, loaded a bunch of data, and then tried to do a select statement, right? <laughs> and so I kind of went through what I think everybody here is going to go through, where you have to learn about data modeling first. So all right, that's a great way to start. You're going to save lives today. Awesome. So and the, the reason I say that is everybody, we, we, you think you're unique, you're not. Um, remember, we're all just moist robots. We all do the same thing over and over again. Um, we see this. We see things all the time. With you know, we're in the business of being Cassandra experts. So whenever you have problems, you come to us. That's a good thing. Or maybe before, <laughs> but let's talk about like what are the common problems that you see all the time. Let's educate everyone so they don't have to have it. Yeah. So I'm actually going to go through you know some of the evolution of conversation and topic I've seen. Uh, so I joined Datastax, it was mid-2014. Uh, a lot of the conversations we were having with either customers or prospects were about existing systems. A lot of traditional relational databases, I mean, I hate to point out Oracle specifically, but it was a lot of Oracle that just could not handle the workload. Um, and so you know, either, either it had to be taken down or it just couldn't keep up. Um, and so you know, what do you do when your database can't keep up, right? First, you're going to throw hardware at the problem. You're going to max out your CPU, your RAM, your storage. And then at some point, you're going to think, well, maybe I should be splitting my data across multiple servers. And then you're thinking, well, maybe I actually don't want to do that because it's complicated to set up, pain to maintain. And then if you're, the master goes down before it replicates the data to the replicas, you could actually lose data. And so this is where, this is actually a slide from a presentation Netflix did at Strata in 2016. When they were in the, you know, mailing out DVDs, it didn't matter that the site was offline, right? But when they switched to a streaming video business model, well, 
you can't have that anymore. And I, I know if Netflix is down, it's not the end of the world, you know. Oh, you no, no, actually, no, 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 no. If Netflix you can actually is down, get your work a serious done. problem in my house. I know that. My kids are like, call the president. Yeah, I know. Twitter blows off. I yeah. mean, it's, it is. Homeland you know, Security gets involved. It's bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, so this is, you know, Netflix not as critical, but you're supporting a trading desk and your traders don't have their position or their cash balance. You're a retailer. People can't check out, right? Like, think about the impact it has on your customers. So people were looking for a solution that provided 100% uptime. Um, and really the only way to do that is to do multiple copies of your data in multiple geographical location. And this is what's great about Cassandra is that it comes in with built-in replication. So uh, in that example, you know, two data centers, RF3 per data center. That way you can do active-active. If one data center goes down, you still have a copy of your data. Um, so it's, yeah, it makes That's your life a lot easier. Friends don't let friends shard. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, and then the conversation kind of switched over to microservices. So who here has moved to microservice architecture, is implementing it, heard the keyword, buzzword? Oh, no, okay. So it's actually, it's not new, right? Like, that concept has been around forever. Um, but a lot of companies had this huge monolithic DB2 mainframe kind of backends, and everybody's moving to agile development. Mm. Everybody needs to iterate constantly, uh, you know, new production releases every two weeks. And it's really hard to do when you have these huge systems. And so now you're looking for something that's actually scalable. Uh, and then this is where Apache Cassandra comes in, because, you know, like Jeff mentioned, you double the size of uh, the nodes, you double the throughput, you double the data volume you can handle. So as you're rolling out new services, new features, your database can scale with you. And then this actually brings back to that, the previous slide with uh, the presentation that Netflix did at Strata. They also talked about how, you know, they had hardware failure, they needed something that scaled, and they realized that moving to the cloud was actually a great fit. Because, so as an SE, the, in my first conversation with you, I'm always going to ask, uh, you know, are you, where are you going to deploy this? Is it going to be on-premise or in the cloud? And the reason I ask is because a lot of people, when they deploy on-premise, they're going to be like, well, we have this internal cloud. It's amazing. It's, you know, four hyper-threaded CPU, eight gig of RAM on a shared storage, and it's just not the hardware profile you need for Cassandra. And so then the next question is like, oh, okay, um, what about getting, you know, this kind of hardware? And like, oh yeah, no problem, we'll have it in like three to six months. It just, I mean, it's just not practical, right? And then same thing where we talked about scalability, as you need more throughput, you know, if you see any latency issues, you need to add more nodes. Well, it's something that's really easy to do, let's say in AWS, deploy another EC2 instance, and voila, you have a new node. So. Cloud is probably the best thing, the best words as an SE I want to hear from customers. Because of <laughs> scaling. Scaling, not waiting six months for procurement. Yeah. The worst, yeah. the worst moment is when you have, oh, we can get that. Uh, let me call the IT department. How many people want to call the IT department when you need new har hardware? Oh, zero hands. Still getting zero hands. Yeah. It's, it's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, the evolution has been from, you know, need something 100% of time, need something that scales, and that lately it's been a lot of, well, I have a ton of data, now what? Like, don't just show me my credit card transaction, show me that, hey, I spend way too much money at Starbucks, maybe I should be enrolling in the program, and then, hey, I can get double the points, so that way I get some benefit out of it. Uh, so it's, I, did anybody go to Strata this year? Like, Every top, <laughs> yeah. all of the Everyone in the back did, yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all the talks were machine learning and AI. I mean, or like 90% of them, right? Like, do something with all this data you have now, which is a great way to queue up for this video. Oh, yeah. So we have a great example, don't we? Um, and this is, uh, this is Rajay Rai from Macquarie Bank. We find my mouse. There it is. Let me tell you right now. I almost moved to Australia just so I could use this bank. They have an awesome app. Watch what he talks about. 
My name is Rajay Rai. I work in banking and financial services, which is part of the Macquarie Group. Our vision is to create digital customer experiences that are highly personalized and intuitive for our users. We want to take the complex data and the complex processes and make the data highly consumable and interactive. We have already been demonstrating that by being the first, releasing a couple of features that are first of its kind. We focused on three key themes. The first one was, of course, insights, where you could see where you've spent your money. You could see the categories of expenditure that you had. And then you had oversights, where you could set up your budgets. And foresights is when you can set up a budget and get an alert based on how you're tracking against a budget. Also in terms of insights, we focused on natural language search, which allows people to interact with the applications in a conversational manner. So it's really easy to use. We attempt to reduce the friction by providing contextual information to our users. You need to have a general database for the digital age, which means your database needs to be able to address concerns such as in-memory, machine learning, analytics, streaming, proximity-based searches, facet searches, full-text searches. You have to pick the right technology for this. In our case, we just picked one vendor, which was Datastax. It was all about ensuring that we could get enterprise-grade solutions for our mission-critical applications. In spite of all our upgrades, and all the hardware upgrades that we have, our applications have been on. We don't have to think about uh, downtime. Our platforms are always on and always highly available. Data is available at real time and it's replicated across the entire cluster and it's available for search and analytics at the same time. So there's less cost in terms of ETLs. So that's fundamentally reduced our total cost of ownership and it also provides us the ability to be agile and be quick to market with our features. We've been working with Datastax for almost a year and a half now, and what we have seen is that Datastax continues to invest in platform innovation, and that is extremely important to us because we can focus on building out the assets that help us differentiate ourselves from the marketplace. Datastax demonstrates that they are constantly innovating and they are thinking about the future. They provide us with that leverage and while we get to focus on building out our assets. So it's, I think, a match made in heaven. All right, that was a great little commercial. Really cool app. But this is developer day. We get to talk about the real story, right? So yeah. There was a lot more behind. That was, I mean, Rajay is a great architect. He really knows what he's doing there. but. Let's get into the nuts and bolts. Like, what really happened there? Like, what was some of the challenges there? Yeah, I mean, and this is something we see, I guess, with everybody, who, a lot of people when they start with Datastax, DSC, Apache Cassandra, I'll kind of use them interchangeably. But um, so one is, you know, hardware, right? I mentioned it before. A lot of times I'll say, hey, you need, you know, 16 core CPU, 32 gig of RAM, SSDs. And then people are like, oh, I have spinning disk. I'm like, no. Oh, I have shared storage. Like, no. You that's know, a, that's the, a real problem, isn't it? It's like they think, I, I say they. I used to think this too. There is no magic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying SSDs because I make money every time I say SSDs, right? Like, I'm, I'm saying it because we've tested it out. And if you really want that kind of performance, that kind of throughput, you need SSDs. And it's, I think it's important to realize that the, it's durable data. Your data is sitting on the disk. so. You want your data fast, make your disks fast. It's not an in-memory database. Those are very volatile. Yeah, same thing with, you know, I'll say RF3 per data center, multiple data centers if you want high availability. Uh, we had a customer that did two data centers, which is good, but then RF2, RF1, uh, and then they were keeping track of all the exceptions, which kind of like worked Honestly, it, I don't know how, but it somehow worked for about a year. And then little by little, it just kind of caught up with them and just not manageable. Uh, consistency level, like we talked about you know, quorum, but what you really want is local quorum, especially if you have data centers that are geographically distributed. Uh, if you have, let's say, US, EMEA, Asia Pac, you don't want to pay the, you know, the latency price of going across the world, so use local quorum. 
So little things like that, you should you know, pay attention. It'll make a difference in your performance. I, and I think that's a pretty, I mean, do you think um, that's the most fundamental challenge? It, what is it, operations, but then? No, I mean, to be fair, it all goes down to your data model. Data model. Yeah. Good uh, thing we got Steve here. There he is. <laughs> yeah, if you get your data model right, it will save you a whole lot of pain. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we saw it at a customer. Um, is Sebastian? No. So work with the client, did everything from review the data model, uh, reviewed even the application. They were using Execute. We changed it to Execute Async. Uh, they actually had a center of excellence that was providing and deploying DSC for them so they didn't have to worry about configuration and tuning. Everything looked great. But then they kept having performance issues and then nodes kept flapping and we couldn't figure out what, the, you know, what was going on. And we realized that the data they were using was not real production data, which is, you know, it's fair. But the test data was actually not a, it didn't actually match what they were expecting in production. So instead of having, um, well, their part, they had composite partition key and it was actually blowing through their partition, which was causing uh, compaction issues, da 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 da. So if anyone like, wants to have help with that, you're going to be around all day? I'll be around all day. All right, yeah, and you probably will just say, Got this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, totally happy to review your data model. Uh, talk to it. It's something that you know. From a, if you are coming from a relational database background, you, you don't really care about what the data means, right? What you care is about normalizing your data to death, and then you can do complex joins with DSC and Cassandra. You you know, it's one table per query. Uh, you have to think about how you actually retrieving the data because this is distributed. So you want to make sure you're looking, you're doing partition lookups. So the other, I think the other factor um, that you can talk to pretty well is um, the use case, because yeah. getting the use case right is also important. You don't want to uh, you don't want to use a baseball bat to play football. You know, there was that old analogy like this is the wrong tool, like a hammer. No, I need a screwdriver. So. We have a very specific technology for use cases. What are some of those use cases out there? Yeah, so I'm going to talk about two kind of larger use cases. But to be fair, I mean, we've seen a lot of use cases. And it really varies. I mean, sometimes, OK, I agree. If it fits on your laptop, probably not a great fit for DSC. Uh, but sometimes you don't have that much data, but you need 100% uptime. Uh, one of them is for the, like authentication into a website. If people can't log in, then they can't use they can't check their account, they can't make purchases. So if you need 100% uptime and you need something that's fast, then that could be a, a good fit for, uh, for DSC. Um, another one that we see a lot is that single view of the customer um, and, the custom, uh, and customer journey. They're slightly different, but they're kind of all, they revolve around the customer. What's challenging is that you have multiple data sources, uh, usually different types of data coming at different speeds. Um, you need something that they can scale as you add more data sources. Then you can use something like our Spark integration because a lot of times you'll end up having a message queue like, let's say, Kafka, and then you use Spark streaming, and then you can enrich your data before you even save it into DSC. Or you can do, let's say, you know, aggregation. Uh, we work with a customer, a telecom company that was doing, they didn't care about minute usage, they wanted to do 15 minute in, uh, intervals. So they were actually aggregating it using Spark Streaming before saving into DSC. Uh, then the other challenge with, with this kind of system where you have multiple data sources that don't always have the same data set is then how do you do entity resolution? How do you know that, hey, I just used this ATM transaction, is me, and I went into a retail bank and I spoke to a you know, financial services person, or I went online, I called customer service, so now you have multiple channels they all have different type of data or different amount of data. How do you connect them all to you know, one entity? And this is actually a great fit for graph. Uh, if you think about it from a relational you know, data model standpoint, as you add more data, as you add more channels, as you start doing more logic because you have different type of data, it's a little complex. Versus graph, well, as a user, you know, I'm, a, I'm a vertex, and then I have this ATM, I have this credit card. And then as you bring in new data sources, then you can use you know, we've our Spark integration to do some of the logic. And then you can start building models so you can do unsupervised machine learning. So little by little, you have more efficient and more accurate joining of your data sources. There's a, um, I'm going to stop just to 
do we recommend, I mean, when people come to us with use cases, are we quick to say no? I mean, yes. I, I think uh, that yeah, If it's not the right fit, we'll be like the first person to say no because. <laughs> How many times do you say no? <laughs> this is not the right use case. <laughs> a, a couple, yeah, honestly, I've I actually said no a couple times. We're, we're not in data today. warehouse. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. today, over coffee, no. no we're, we're not, if you're doing completely ad hoc queries, this is probably not a great fit. If you're doing batches, like if 90% of your load is batch loading, batch reporting, uh, if you don't need anything in real time, this is probably not the right fit, right? Yeah. We're not gonna, f this is not like one size fits all. And we're not going to push this for a wrong use case because then it's going to make my life miserable. So yeah. Yeah, we want you definitely to. I enjoy my life. Do it correctly. Easy. There's yeah. a question in the back. Yes, as a data stack, well, am I allowed to ask a question? I don't want to buy data. You should know all the answers because you have a blue lanyard. <laughs> it's very embarrassing. I just told everyone that the blue lanyards know everything. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, what is everybody else working on? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Line up. We want to hear everybody's use case. Uh, single file right here. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm kidding. It just shows you the diversity of everybody's got a problem they're trying to solve. Every company is a software company now. Yeah. 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 Because oh, the other on. use case I was going to talk about is Jeff gets up here. it's fraud. Um, it. and, and I know fraud is a... <clears throat> So fraud is like a really, really wide topic, right? It could be everything could from real-time credit card transaction fraud, like I'm using my credit card here, but somebody Sorry. used the same credit card number in good. Brazil five minutes ago, right? Something's not quite right. And you need to yeah. be able to detect that within real time. It needs to be single digit uh, millisecond response time. I mean, it needs to be pretty much instantaneous. Or it could be, you know, uh, incident resolution. Right? Uh, you sign up for a service, there's a new pay-per-view, you want to see the next fight, you know? Uh, but somehow, like, the service isn't working because, hey, maybe your credit card or your account got flagged, so you call customer service. Um, or it can be, you know, pattern matching. Hey, you've noticed this kind of behavior, and now you're trying to avoid this behavior again. So, you know, that first use case, real-time credit card fraud identification, you need something that's really fast. And I have to say, Cassandra, if you're doing partition read, partition write, it's probably one of the fastest da databases out there. Uh, if you're doing incident resolution, well, you need to be able to search through your data. So if anybody's tried CQL, you know you, know you can't do partial text, you can't do group by, you can't do joins. And this is where our solar integration comes in. So with solar, you can do partial text, so like type ahead or suggestions. Uh, you can do misspellings. You can do, you know, even facet queries, which is basically like a group by in in SQL. Uh, you can do geospatial searches, and then for pattern matching, it's a mix of uh, analytics and graph, depending on what you're trying to do. Yeah, well, you know, and it's interesting. I think fraud, uh, do you, uh, fraud, that use case, you could probably that exact thing that you're doing with fraud, like fast data could probably be replaced. I mean, you could replace a lot of use cases with, and I need access to my data really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah like, I mean, that the quote Jeff had on before, you know, you need, you need your website, your web page to respond within what, one or two seconds now before people get frustrated and move on to your competitor. So you need that, your database piece to be less than 500 milliseconds max, right? IoT use cases. Yeah. This, this thing did something that it shouldn't do. Respond. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's one of. Uh, I, mean, I have a Roomba. I'm very used to this, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is slightly different, but working with a customer, and this is a telecom company, and yeah, they do network monitoring, right? And hey, you know, the router failed, and then they see this kind of behavior that happened before. And so now they want to see when they are seeing this type of behavior, do something before it cascades into a router failure. Right, so it's learning and it's identification. Yeah. So, all right, uh, final parting thought. Imparting your wisdom on what, it, 
what do people need to know as they move into the use case? Give us some last minute thoughts on some stuff here. Sure. Uh, so one of them is... Um, Did it work? Yes. Yes. It goes back to your data modeling, right? Data modeling is going to basically make or break your system. Um, know your data. Uh, make sure that you know, hey, um, whether you're a retailer or a bank or even you know, telecom, you have customers, they do transactions, you do a, part a composite partition key with a time bucket, but sometimes you have like uh, professional sh uh, shoppers, right? That will blow through your partition. Like the, we call it the Justin Bieber effect, but you know, basically you might have uh, you know, a bank where you have an account that's a merchant that will end up having more transactions than others. So not having the right data model, not having the right partition key, will impact compaction, it'll impact performance, it'll impact the state of your environment. That's kind of a big one. And then the other one is, so, and it, this is a fair question, right? When a, usually in the first conversation, people are like, well, how many nodes am I gonna need? And I'm like, you know, I, uh, I don't know. Like, honestly, like, you can't tell. Well, uh, one easy, million, and then we start going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the easiest way of doing it is, our documentation says about two terabytes of data per node. I say one, because if I say one, you're here two, and you won't scale until you get three, right? So it's like, <laughs> kind of like a middle point. Thanks. Uh, but then there's another part to sizing. It's your latency. The number of times I ask people, oh, what are your SLAs? What's your throughput? Um, you know, this is iPhone launch. Uh, we work with a lot of the telecom companies, and when there's an iPhone launch, there's double the amount of volume, but you need the same response time. So you need to plan for that. So you know, what do you do? Well, you need to set up an environment. I would say start with five nodes in two data centers. Do your data model because your three million records in your relational database is not going to be the same size you know, in Cassandra. And then also test, do performance testing, test for peaks, peaks uh, writes, peak reads. Uh, and then monitor your system. We have a tool called Ops Center. Monitor your read, write, latency, your throughput, make sure you don't have hints piling up, make sure compaction, your JVM, everything's healthy. 